my bones are beginning to pray If my heart is a battleground My defenses run both ways The flesh is a beggar, a thief But there is a spirit man away
So we hear Jesus' voice. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And we hear Jesus' voice again saying, Fix your eyes on me. I am the author and the perfecter of your faith. And it was a joy set before me that I endured the cross and I scorned its shame. Consider me so that you not grow weary and lose heart.
this Good Friday, we turn to Psalm 22, a psalm of David, a psalm of lament, a prophetic psalm, a psalm that Jesus himself, while on the cross, was mindful of. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, and I'm not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of your people. And you, our fathers, put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. And you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you. Even at my mother's breast, from birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him, for he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help.
Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from men who hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He is oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, there was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of her soul, you will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life into death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for their sins. Don't go on me in the sunset's free. 
free on this free indeed now my debt is paid it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled now the curse of sin has no hold on me whom the Son sets free all is free The account of the crucifixion of Jesus. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place which is called the skull, they were crucified, and the criminals with him, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The soldiers offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. When they had nailed him to the cross and lifted up him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. And those who passed by deriled him, wagging their heads and saying, Fool, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another. And with the scribes saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe.
crucifixion account and many people stood by watching the soldiers continued to mock him coming up and offering him vinegar and saying if you are the king of the Jews save yourself one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying are you not the Christ save yourself and us but the other rebuked him saying do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed justly for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, it was noon. And there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Well, the sun's light failed. And at the ninth hour, Jesus, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. At this, a bowl full of vinegar stood there. So they put a sponge full of vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head. Then he cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And at this very moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised to life. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And when the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, truly this was the Son of God.
Hands come between my fingertips I've hidden in the garden I've denied you with my very lips Got a phone down to my knees With a hammer in my hand And you look at me I'm so rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into his kingdom. In Jesus, we have redemption. We have the forgiveness of sins. Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God. And in Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, his people. He is beginning in the firstborn from among the dead, so in everything he might have the supremacy. God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace, peace through his blood shed on the cross.
Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace.
Nothing but the blood of Jesus, the one who was crucified for us, and the one who was resurrected for us. We pray that God gives you peace, and we pray that we will see you this weekend as we celebrate the resurrected Jesus.